Behind me is a car that is very, very special, not only to vintage racing, but to racing in general. This car, driven by Tony A. to Z. Adamowitz in 1968, won the under two liter championship. Now, most people think of Tony Adamowitz as being a Formula 5000 driver. Well, of course, he's very well known for his 69 championship in the Eagle, but now I'm joined by owner Jonathan Seeger and Tony A. to Z. Adamowitz. Can you come here and talk to me, guys? Yeah, I, it's like I have to beg you guys. Uh, no, come you on over here, come on over here. All no, right. <laughs> First of all, Tony, most people think of you as a Formula 5000 driver. Now, this is kind of a, 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 at a vintage event, this is a, this is a much different thing, actually seeing you attached to yet another championship winning car. Well, if it wasn't for the championship winning car in 1968 for Porsche, I wouldn't have been able to do the 5000. So that was my stepping stone. I went from a two liter car to a five liter car in a formula car a concept. Never, never raced a formula car in my life. Never, never, ever. So that was a big jump. So now you've you've been united here with Jonathan Seeger, right. who is the proud owner of this lovely Porsche 911, also known as U27. Yes. Where, where, maybe you can tell me a little bit of the history and how you came about getting the car. Well, I export vintage Porsches to Holland and Germany, and. Um, a friend of mine, Paul Kramer from Auto Kennel, called, gave me a call one day and he goes, this is really not your formula, Jonathan, but maybe it'll get your foot in the uh, premier events and it'll, it'll, it'll achieve what you've always told me that you wanted to, which was to be part of the culture in a, that wasn't in the sales end. I love Porsches, the, the Porsche courses through my veins. The race culture is something that I've always, it was a dream deferred, and uh, now I have the chance to, to be a part of it and to, to vicariously, uh, and in real time, maybe learn how to drive on the track and have some fun, and I've got the best teacher on the planet. I was going to say, you got a good got teacher. An iconic car here, and we've got history, I mean, this is history, history, and more history. Yeah. This is what's amazing. You, you know what? Now, I, I, I hate to tell you this, Adamowitz, but you are history. Yeah, I'm, I'm history, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. But, you know, but, but, but really, I mean, how does it feel to, to be reunited with this car with such enthusiasm behind it? Well, I think it's pretty exciting, actually. It's a, it's a real compliment uh, for what, what the car did back in 1968. And now to have uh, this car doing the uh, same thing out in the public and in uh, competition with uh, vintage uh, cars of its own uh, kind, you know. So it's doing a great job. Now, I was fortunate enough to go for a ride uh, with you this morning. And uh, you, were, you were laying down some rubber and, uh, you know, we were doing a little bit of four-wheel drift through the corners. And... Uh, it really gave me an idea of what it must have been like back in the day. Does it does it take you back when you uh, drive this car? Yeah, every time you get back into a car like this that you've done well with, it does take you back. Uh, no, the car is, uh, you know, it's a short wheelbase car. So the car is a little bit more of a handful for the average person. But uh, it also makes uh, a little bit more of an agile car, too, with drifting. Uh, you don't do four-wheel drifts all that often, but on occasion you do. And Jonathan, have you had much of a chance to actually drive the car? Uh, yes and no. Never on the track, but uh, the day I got it, I took it around the block to everybody's chagrin. <laughs> I think it was a Sunday and there was a lot of sleepers in. But, uh, but I, you know, the car is just, I could feel it, I can tell, I build early Porsches and uh, this thing has what it takes and, and it's just, the, what, what's really amazing to me is the synergy, how this collective is so much larger than just a car and a person and a purchase. You know, it's bringing history back to the present with a future. And uh, for me, I mean, it, it was a very intuitive purchase. It had nothing to do. I certainly didn't think with my noggin. I thought with my heart. And uh, I just, I just, the chemistry of having Tony back in the car, it intuitively told me when Paul, Paul was telling me, you know, 
Tony is really, really attached to this car because it was the inceptionary launch pad to an involvement that really put him on the map. Oh, yeah. And this car and the wins that it were achieved, here we have very low budget production in 1968. Three guys with a vision that totally slaughtered million dollar funded race teams and left everybody scratching their heads. You know, this is where you come out with this uh, junkyard dog moniker that you've got on the jackets. I, by the way, I like this. Uh, let the dogs out, and uh, but that's what they—that's what they call. Them. Tell you what, that, that was the uh, that was the nickname that uh, they they fondly gave to the car because the car did come out. The original framework and the original uh, profile of the car actually came from a junkyard, the shell. Now, my understanding was the car was wrecked at Daytona, is that right? No. This this car, the, the very, very first car that we built was wrecked at Daytona by the car owner. It rolled it on the infield. Uh, that car was a total separate car. We took it back to Wilton, Connecticut, stripped it down, took all the good parts out of it, and, and waited for a... a a donor car that came from the New York City police pound. And that's where you get the junkyard dog. Because when it came to us, it was completely stripped. And then we had to build a car from February and be at a racetrack at Sebring in March. So we also had transportation time. So we built the car, ran it at Sebring, the car was very impressive. Uh, the uh, compliments from Porsche were incredible. Uh, Baron von Hunstein uh, made a special trip over to our hotel. He was the Porsche team manager and, and just complimented us on uh, what a great car we built. Uh, they had not seen anything like that in Germany. So they had not seen anything like that ever. So we just had so many unique refinements on the car that uh, it just left left them uh, just in awe of the car. And, and naturally, it, it you you then came in with this junkyard dog and and, uh, and effectively spanked the competition. Yes. Yes. Now this car, um, the the provenance of this car has to do with performance. And it won six out of 10 races, finished second in two others. And it just annihilated the competition, but it also frustrated the heck out of the five liter Camaros and Mustangs and so forth, because the car was always ahead of them. <laughs> That's amazing. So having this kind of history in the stable now, and, and the fact that you deal in Porsches, you, you're you used to having them come and go very, very quickly. Do you have a lot of future plans for this car? Well, you know, I really want to hang on to it for dear life, to be honest with you. It's just that, first, I want, to, I want to segue to one thing. God bless our troops. Where in the world does a military base demilitarize and civilianize for a weekend like this? What, I mean, it's just a mind blower, this whole thing. And as far as the history of the car and my, and my, my end game with it, it's yet to be seen, but I think that the undercurrent, uh, the undercurrent of my motives is to keep it, enjoy it, ride the wave, make friends and have fun. That really is kind of the spirit of vintage racing. And, uh, you know, here with 1968 Trans Am under two liter champion, Tony Adamowitz, Jonathan Seeger, and the 1968 championship winning car.